In this video we're going to look at arbitrary rotation and that's for images that are slightly out of true or lines that you want dead straight along the vertical or horizontal axis are slightly out. This means that you can't turn the image through 90 degrees or 180 degrees, you do have to change it ever so slightly. There are a number of different ways of doing this, but in this video we're going to look at the image image rotation arbitrary option. So if I open the image to begin with, and on your disks we have a number of rotate arbitrary options. So I'm going to open Rotem, and this is Sainsbury's in U Cross strangely enough, and you can see that the building is at an angle. As I said, we have the Rotate View tool, but we can also turn on Grid Lines. So if I click on the View Extras and then Grids, you can see I get a nice little grid work up against the image. You can use this to, and it is a guess, to guess how many degrees we need to rotate the image. You might find that your grid lines are too close together, or they're um, producing minute or tiny little squares. With a Windows-based machine, you'd say Edit and Preferences. Because I'm on a uh, Macintosh, I have to go Photoshop Preferences and then it's Guides, Grid and Slices and we can change the size of the grid lines. I'll pull this to one side. At the moment it's set to grid lines every 10 centimeters with a 2 centimeter subdivision which is my preferred option but you might have something like a grid line every 1 centimeter with a 2 centimeter subdivision and you can see how close those little grids are. So my preference, like I say, is a grid every 10 centimetres with a 2 centimetre subdivision. So, like I say, we can use this to guess how much this needs to rotate. If you find a straight line, and then follow that along. What we can also do, if the uh, rotate view tool is working, we can rotate the view until it's straight. Unfortunately this does also rotate the grid lines, so it's either or really. You can see I think that's it's not quite straight. Yeah, and it's telling me that it's gone to minus three degrees. So if I reset the view, I can turn the grid lines off as well. So it's view extras and then uncheck show grid lines. I now say image, image rotation arbitrary. And it's telling me that, no, it's got 41.19 degrees clockwise typed in there already, which is completely wrong. If I click on OK, we'll see what happens. The image has skewed even more greatly. With Photoshop, as with lots and lots of different programs, if you've done something wrong or something happens and it looks wrong, we can edit and undo Rotate Canvas. Something to be aware of is that undo has now become redo. So edit undo, edit redo is a, a switching action between the change you've just made and the former image. If you need to step backwards sequentially, so go through a number of different edits that you've achieved or performed, we'd need to step backwards. So stepping backwards allows you to go chronologically back through changes that you've applied. And we'll see this in more detail as we go through. So I want to rotate this image, image, image rotation, arbitrary. And as we saw with the rotate view tool, it is 
more or less 3 degrees, but minus 3 degrees, so that's counterclockwise. So if I type 3 into the box, click OK, and it's almost spot on. And again, I can turn on the grid lines, and the grid lines will always be straight. And I don't think that looks too bad. This tower here, or no, this lamppost is slightly off. But the top of the buildings, reasonably okay. I can always say image, image rotation arbitrary, and take it by another one. Yes, that looks much better. Okay, once you're happy with that, if we make it full screen, and you'll see now that there are large areas of white within the image. So this image now needs cropping. If I select the crop tool, it's this one here, looks like two set squares laying on top of each other. To crop an image, we'll need to look at a further video just so that it works properly. One last thing to be aware of in this um, arbitrary rotation, we've already seen two ways in which to recognize the amount in which you need to rotate. Guesswork with the grid lines and the rotate view tool. A third way, if I just step backwards, do all of these changes to get back to the original image. A third way is hidden under the eyedropper tool. Remember, if a tool has the right pointing black arrow, we can right click and it brings out all of the options, or press and hold the left mouse button. And here we have the ruler tool. The ruler tool can be quite useful because it can give us the angles. So if I position the mouse cursor just at the start of the, an area, press and hold the left mouse button, and I can draw a line parallel with a line I want to be straight. And it has to be parallel. If you have a straight line for the ruler, it just means it will rotate, or it won't rotate because you've kept the line parallel. So we need the ruler tool line to be parallel with a out of true line in the image. And we want these lines to be relatively small. You don't want a very long line because it can add to the inaccuracy. Once you've dropped your line and you're happy with it, we can then say image, image rotation arbitrary and the degrees are immediately filled in because of that line that we've drawn. So it recognizes it needs to go 3.44 degrees counterclockwise. If I click OK, then it looks perfect.